uh, I've been get I got this one question in on email on grounding, and um, I know that when you know when we talk about grounding, you know we it's 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 one of those things that kind of. Ooh. Triggers. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I think that will set up Joe. my epilepsy right there. <laughs> and um, uh, Ken was asking, I'm wondering what your thoughts are in running an RF ground from the radio to earth when operating portable or mobile. I know it's a lot of folks set up on a table or temporary in a vehicle. No one seems to run a chassis to earth ground. So why is that? Uh, you're, you're waiting for me to answer this, right? <laughs> I can give an answer, but I think that <laughs> do we want to hear? Do we want to hear my answer, or do we want to hear the master electrician? <laughs> well, uh, there's a lot of different things I can channel from here, but the answer is no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I've like I've had heated discussions with people about this. The answer is no. You don't need to do it. So, as an electrical safety. You don't need to run it because your source is a battery, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you were to ground with something, that ground must lead back to the source. Generally, the source is a transformer. If you're like on uh, the mains inside your house, there's a transformer that is grounded. The center point is, is bonded to the ground. And mm -hmm. the, the earth is a high impedance path back to the source, okay? But you're running off a battery. So that's one number one right there. Number two is for lightning protection. Let me tell you, if you're not picking yourself up when you start hearing thunder, you're on your own. And a ground rod ain't going to help you if you get struck by lightning when you're right next to your radio. Yep. Two. When thunder three, rolls, you got to go. So it's... Right. Um, just, just, just go inside. Pick up your radio, yep. go inside. And plus, do you want to actually pull a ground rod back out of the earth while like there's thunder and lightning? No, no, no. Okay. Number three, and that there's like it's for our reference for the antenna. No, 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 no. A counterpoise is not mm -hmm. a ground. Okay. Yeah, correct. A counterpoise is a section of an antenna that lays on the ground, but it is not a ground. Okay. The only time that we ever really bond an antenna or some sort of tower structure to the ground is for lightning protection. And yeah, I said yeah. just a moment ago, if you see lightning, get your, you know, what inside. Disconnect. So, yep. Under no circumstances should you be ground. Do you bond your two meter radio in the car to the ground as you're driving down the road? No. No. The only reason that we really do it at home is one, because eventually at some point in time, we're using 120 volts, either for the radio itself, the power supply or something else. Right. Mm -hmm. We also bond at home because there may be reflected RF that gets back into the system. So but, it gives it a path back to ground. That That's kind of a neat bond, thing. But bonding, bonding isn't grounding. So. Bonding is a little bit of a different thing. And yeah. again, you don't need to bond in the in the field when you're doing like POTA or something. Okay, guys. Um, you know, <laughs> you could technically, you know, maybe run a bonding jumper between a radio and a tuner, but it's probably not gonna make a difference, really. Okay. Um yeah. we bond for lightning protection at home because yep. uh, setups are permanent, right? Your antenna can get hit outside and lightning can travel in. Um, that does happen. The lightning arresters, like a polyphaser, um, if you have a tower or you're supposed to be setting ground rods at the tower, those are all things that we do. But again, we're not doing that in the field. No. So there's no reason to do that. Our club used to always put up a 30, a 30 foot tower for field day and then insist that we need to drive ground rods in. And I said, are you ridiculous? Right? Because if it's getting hit by lightning, we're getting the heck out of here. Yeah. And there's been a couple of times we've had to get the heck out of there in a hurry. Okay. Um, so I, in the end, it, no grounding needed while operating outside, like parks on the air or just like camping or anything. Period. Yep. None. Yep. End of discussion. I don't care what you have to say <laughs> about it. Done. <laughs> And thank you for coming to my TED talk. The te <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the vehicle, we talk about you know people kind of mistake 
grounding and bonding. And in the vehicle, we bond all the metal elements of the vehicle together in order to help facilitate a ground network, mm -hmm. which is not an electrical ground, but part of your counterpoise system for your, your HF antenna. Right, right. So remember, we go back to um, to AC theory, AC mm -hmm. alternating current, which RF is an alternating current, is that anytime you have an alternating current, you almost automatically get two things. You get inductance and you get capacitance. Mm -hmm. So any two metal objects that are not connected together, there's going to be a capacitance in between them. Okay, so um, hood, your trunk lid, uh, doors, because there's a gap, there's a small gap in between the metal objects and there, there's going to be some capacitance and that capacitance affects the ground plane of any antenna that you have on yep. a car. Yep. Not a big deal on two meters and 440. Big deal if you run HF. Yes. In so much is that you better get down under your car and actually bond, not ground, but bond your exhaust pipe to the chassis. Because how is your, how is your exhaust pipe connected to the bottom of your car? Big rubber grommets. Yeah. Rubber hangers. So there's a capacitance that builds up in there. So if you take a little bonding, a grounding strap, and <laughs> bond between those two, your mechanic's going to think you're a little crazy, but you're going to be smart because you're going to have a you're going to have a better tuning when you try to <laughs> take that screwdriver antenna and tune to forty and eighty meters. Absolutely, and especially the lower bands. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, you really got to understand grounding and bonding and what it does and when you need to do it and when you don't need to do it, um, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of baloney out there. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, okay, so KB9 DED is the guy mm -hmm. that I actually got a conversation with this once. <laughs> uh, Mike, I love you, but if you tell me to ground rub on a porta activation again, I'm gonna say no, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But, but you know, if you're at home, yes, I highly recommend take a little extra time, make sure that you've got a good ground to earth because it may save you one of these days. Oh yeah, but absolutely. If for two hours, no, forget it. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, or a weekend or whatnot. Absolutely. Yeah, even absolutely. a weekend, like you know, yeah, yeah. Again, if you hear a thunder, just unplug and go back inside the tent. Mm -hmm. So, KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.